Welcome to the show. We have a special guest, Dave Palladino. He's owner of Impact Zone in Norwood, New Jersey, and creator of Strike Zone. He is a fitness and mixed martial arts expert, uh, as well as a celebrity trainer. You're listening to Recommended Daily Dose with Drs. Clinton Coleman and Suraj Sugar, the not so average health show with a unique spin on what's making headlines in healthcare. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you guys, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, you have an uh, amazing story. You want to tell us what your background is? I, we know that you, um, you know, you you train a lot of important people. Um, you do that now, and also, um, you know, how how'd you just get started? Um, so I, I wasn't in the fitness industry at first. I was actually, um, a bouncer and a bodyguard. So, um, I bouncer, had to bouncer where? So probably every, uh, major club in New York and New Jersey for wow. a long, long time down the shore. So the Jersey guys like shore, this acting up. Yeah. Yeah. Before the Jersey shore came out. Right. So this is before, so you weren't throwing out the situation or Snooki and all these. No, I, I was actually, um, prior to that okay gotcha, right. I, yeah prior prior to that we were like the real jersey short people they were not even from new jersey those guys <laughs> from staten island <laughs> yeah that's right that's, that's right, right. That's, that's fake but you know what's interesting to me i know you have a connection to one of my favorite tv shows of all time of which i still w- watch religiously you know when i'm just hanging out and sopranos yes i was their bodyguard for seven eight years wow so They're, was it Paulie Walnuts. I mean, who, who exactly are, were you? Were you the bodyguard? Coach? So any. So okay. So I never did on set um, stuff. That, so whenever they were on set, they would hire municipalities to like. Right. You know. Right. So I I would do personal appearance stuff. So I would get called whenever they went to a nightclub, a restaurant, Atlantic City. So it was all of them. It was Gandolfini. It was every single one of them. So I was I was with them a lot. Even Big Puss. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, he was yeah he was there a lot. <laughs> he was there. Did those guys need bodyguards, or they seem pretty tough on camera? Okay, so they're probably smaller than the women in this wow. room right now. Wow. They are not big at all. Wait, ja- James was large. James is large. James Puss was big, right? I mean, he was big. He, he yeah, he was heavy. He was big, but the right. rest of the cast is not big at all. I tell you, Paulie. I don't even know what his real name. Paulie Walnuts. Uh, yeah, so wait, I, I know he was kind of a bad guy, he's, tough guy in real life. If right? you see him, he's the most non-intimidating individual in the world you would take his milk money really he terrified me in that show though he was great crazy yes <laughs> so these guys weren't like wilding out in, in in the clubs or bars no no, no. i didn't say they weren't wild i just said so you got any crazy they stories or yeah no, uh, yeah like for instance i would he'll I take took, you out if he has a so <laughs> i took i took ro- so how many I, people I, did you take out <laughs> i had to put them um i was basically in charge of everything so I, it's let's say i had to get their rooms at the end of the night yeah so i, I there was multiple times when a few of the male actors would send me to the front desk and get 20 of the same room key right and i would get 20 of their room key and they would walk around go her and i go here you go party afterwards here you go party <laughs> right, afterwards. Right. so at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning be 10 girls prior to the you know to the room so it was you know you know that's not unlike actually when i'm out and about with that's uh, with, 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 i was with, gonna with, ask you that you yeah gotta, actually more him than me really but you know are you gonna get me in trouble i'm handing business cards out. oh boy okay well, you can edit that out later but we're talking Sopranos. We're talking um, uh, bodyguarding. But then, how did you develop into fitness and what you're doing today? How did that evolution take place? A so fitness I, and a training. Young, so and at a young age, I excelled in sports, for sure. baseball, and um, I obviously trained at a young age. So I started to like the fitness industry. Did you play I, in college, or were you con- considering playing in college? I played baseball for like two minutes in college. I got hurt. Okay, uh, right. I got a bi- bicep uh, tear. Tear. Okay, right. Yeah. Not that one. That one's from. A tournament, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament. So, um, and then I came out of I came out of college, and then um, I went. I was into fitness. I started becoming a personal trainer, and obviously, I had to stay big and in shape for bouncing and bodyguard work. Sure, sure. It's kind of the image you're gonna. So, I went into the fitness industry, and it evolved into from a personal trainer to a manager to now, you know, gym owner. Yeah, so I think the evolution is what we want to talk about today because. Um, I think you have your own ideas and uh, theories which you incorporate into your gym, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, correct. So, um, I, I well, like, what aspect are you asking me to? Well, like, what is what sets apart Impact Zone, right? The, your personal gym uh, from other gyms out there. I mean, you have uh, you know, you have CrossFit, which is huge. You have Orange Theory. You have uh, 
you know, jazzercise, which Dr. Coleman enjoys. I mean, there's different <laughs> things that people do, but what is it about the impact zone that's so, unique? So, impact so zone, he's, he's I would like, right? to, see the, I would like to see the jazzercise, though, <laughs> by the way. We'll talk about that later. I actually would like to start that program in impact zone. So you say, okay. Yeah. Uh, he'll be, 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 uh, uh, be open to be yeah. an instructor. Yes. <laughs> so, impact zone is all those things you named in, under one roof. Okay. So, my... My thought process, it's a full service fitness center. Right. So my thought process was um, to, you know, corral all those under one roof, have all that programming so it's one-stop shop. You come in and you want to do cardio, you could do cardio on the machines, you want to get a strike zone class, and you want to get a rowing. It's it's all under one roof. So what is strike zone? So strike zone is a, a program I developed about 10 years ago. Um, it's mixed martial arts with a strength and conditioning component in it. So there's striking on the bags, okay, boxing, right. kicking. It's right. kickboxing class with a strength and conditioning component. Well, that's so, good. So, yeah, so you're training like a fighter. Got it, right, right. And have you, I've noticed like an evolution in fitness. So it used to be, um, you know, more cardiovascular stuff. Um, now there's more CrossFit impact things. Have you noticed that? And has that changed how you, how you implement the training So you mean programs. straight from an either just running like and or I lifting weights? Like started with so started jazzercise. Jazzercise. Right. And then I, you know, I rode a bike, and now I'm doing CrossFit and mud runners and races like that. And it seems like that's sort of well, the Well, like basically cross-training, right? So instead of just lifting weights for the sake of lifting weights, you're incorporating um, compound body movements or you're comp or moving, you know, utilizing right. like a pull-up to a, a you know, like burpees or stuff like that. So is that what you're seeing or is that what's better for people uh, well, out there? You know, not to interrupt. So it all depends upon your goal. So right. if you're going to come in here and say, listen, I'm on a jazzercise. I'm not going to train you the same <laughs> way as uh, the jazzercise people are getting as, offended. As a baseball yeah, yeah. player. It depends sure. upon your specific goal. Right. But the industry, to answer your question, does change. You know, right. it's, it's gone from full fitness service gyms then you started seeing express gyms which were like the 1999 gym say oh you don't have to take classes just come here and use our treadmills for 1999 and that was that was kind of like the allure like right, right. and people were like wow i don't have I, I don't take classes i'll just use the equipment and they would flood those gyms but then they quickly found out that that formula wasn't working, so they went back to full fitness centers, and now a lot of boutiques are open up where you could go take a hot yoga, where you could go take a Pilates. Exactly, but it's almost like you have to join five different gyms that have five Correct. different Correct, and if people exercises. actually do the math, like if they do the real math, right. and they take a hot yoga class, and I, I don't know any yoga classes that are under $20, so if they do take a hot yoga class, they take a spin class somewhere else, they take it for the week, and it's four times, get Eighty dollars for the week. You times that by four. They're at three hundred twenty dollars sure, a month. Sure, sure. You walk in my place for thirty nine. You get the whole thing. I mean, it's just, it's. It, but people like that little. I like the little boutique. But so now some people really like the niche of, of certain yeah, things. Yeah, but right? now it's just starting to go away. Back to the full service fitness centers, which I believe will never ever go away it's just right. never go away they stand the test of time well they have a good great financial model you, you have a subscription service which i've had multiple ones and i go for you know in the winter to try to get a little uh some cut little, little meat on those bones a little meat on the yeah. bones yeah. and then it, it drops off but i'm still paying you're still paying rent. you forget about it yeah, yeah. that's still the paying. express gyms theory the express gym theory they 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 survive on numbers so they want five thousand people in the building they could care less if you, if you ever come show up it's like a magazine subscription right 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 it's coming to your door it's 229 you're not going to cancel who cares about it right right but I, I, I so we're a little different we care if you use the, if you use the gym we call we want to see results we're more community oriented we like to know people so you know i i i, I tend to it, stay away from that and i know you've trained and we can talk about you know you and you continue to train uh, elite athletes but you know, unless you're a lead athlete, unless you're Clinton Coleman, like who is your target audience? You're talking about like, let's see, middle-aged people like myself who want to stay in shape, who used to be more in shape. But what is the kind of clientele that you know you used to find coming into your gym, or, or that you tailor your workouts for, or do you tailor for all different? Uh, it's 15, 15 years old to a hundred, so we okay. welcome anybody, all sure. fitness levels, sure. all. You know, so we, we don't deny. Yes, there are pro athletes in the building, mm. collegiate athletes, high school athletes. You know, but any anybody could come in that door and work out anybody and that's who we cater to and so like you do um sports specific so let's say someone's a baseball player i think you've trained uh, is that cc sabathia is that yes. right how would his workout and uh you know differ from let's say a football player lacrosse player what have you well cc sabathia is a pitcher for the new york yankees sure. so you wouldn't have them you know squatting heavy weight mm -hmm. you know you wouldn't have them doing a, you know football exercises there's no reason for that you just got to keep them general fitness keep his arms good and make sure his weight's where it's supposed to be and right 
and um, a football player, obviously, you know, he's got to push the sleds. There's, there's, you know, the protocol changes from athlete to athlete. You can't, you know, you can't change them. You can't train them the same exact way. But see, now I, I know you might think, hey, I look like a football player, but actually, I'm a runner. I'm sure you, <laughs> right. I'm sure you could have guessed that. But I, when I read my, you know, stuff in uh, the running world, they'll say, hey, you know, squats and core exercises will make you a better runner. So, you mentioned squats, but I've always been told that that's like the the godfather of all exercises, right? It's like the one you always do to have a good foundation for everything. But people hate it. I hate it. I mean, I go on there, you know, I just get pained even thinking about doing yeah, squats. Yeah, a lot of people hate squats because it's uh, right. an actual exercise. That <laughs> well, it's a compound exercise, right? Compound and when you're exercise. done, I mean, I'm not only am I in pain, but you're also breathing fast. It's, just, it's like an aerobic and anaerobic exercise all anaerobic at once. Ex- well, you know, barring that you have no injuries, right. squats, very, very beneficial for anybody who's participating in any athletics. Mm-hmm. Because it, it's it's like you said a compound movement and it creates great strength strength creates speed power right, you know, right. across the board so if you could squat yeah you, you know that's a if you're a football player baseball player mm. wrestler you know any any sport you should be squatting they actually said it can increase your testosterone so that may help of course with, with those low T yes, yes. yeah I don't have with low the low T. T. My tea is I think that was. I, I, I didn't mean, I, I I didn't mean to point at him. You know, I just saying. I just. Uh, you keep looking at him every time. <laughs> but for like for the general uh, person, um, you know, we do see benefits of high impact training as compared to traditional exercises. You know, with cardiovascular disease, um, you know, weight loss, strength and conditioning. Uh, but I, I'm sure you see the opposite, where people have more injury, or not more injuries, but certain types of injuries that they didn't get with traditional, like running. You probably get uh, different injuries than you would doing something like uh, CrossFit. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's like a mystique, you know. With, with CrossFit, everybody's like uh, everybody gets hurt on CrossFit, right. and and everybody gets hurt. So uh, look, if you're a carpenter your entire life, you're gonna hit your right. thumb with the right. hammer. Right. There's nothing. There's no getting around it. That's gonna happen. If you train and you work out, if you're a runner, if you're a ballet dancer. If you're a weightlifter, a, a power lifter, you're going to have no some what type yeah. of, of, of uncomfortable soreness somewhere. You right. know, that's all part of the game. That's right. all, I mean, that's part of the game. But the benefit greatly exceeds that. So, if, you know, if you're, not, you know, you're not breaking stuff, the benefit greatly exceeds that. So if you're working out, you know the benefits. You guys are doctors. You lower your, your blood pressure, more muscle, burn, burn fat. It's a higher basal, basal metabolic rate. Right? And so brain it's also rest. great for the head. So you feel, you look good, you feel good, and you navigate through the day a lot better, feeling good and, and positive. So, you know, we talked about, you said, all different ages. Um, what about kids? You have you are you yeah. said young kids in there. I mean, what's the right age for a kid to actually join the gym? Because you know my kid's now almost eleven. Uh, he's into tennis. He's into basketball. He's into running. Uh, but, you know, just only lately he said, "Dad, you know, when should I start lifting weights?" And I don't really know what to tell him. Yeah. So this has been debated since biblical times. But my 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 <laughs> my my thought process on this is so yeah. I don't let anybody. 15 under 15 on the gym floor you by themselves okay right so they have That's to a be, safety issue though. correct okay. that's a safety issue because i don't believe they know what they're doing so unless they're with a parent a guardian or they have a trainer right but under that i have kids from eight years old up until eight years old already in the yes, gym training training now what a trainer sports specific though so let's say i'm swimming so, soccer or yeah um or eight, is it general fitness? eight to ten more balance and coordination stuff. Okay. That's what you want to work on. You know, more balance, coordination stuff, and core. And then you can start, you know, gradually bringing them along into, you know, if they're if they're a wrestler, you know, different types of. Uh, right, right. You know, I have, I have a lot. I have some really good ten year old wrestlers in in one of my um, strength and conditioning classes. So, it, that's it, incredible. Yeah, right? you could you could bring them to the gym. Yeah. Because the myth used to be that if you were too young and it would stunt your growth, you know, lifting that's weights like, or doing too much strength, uh, that's 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 like eating fake. a sandwich and jumping in a pool and getting a cramp. There's no medical data to back that's right. that up. These ever. are the old that's that's fake old tales. You hear? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, a, that's you know the Jersey Devil. I, that's, you can chalk that up with that one. I thought that's real. That is real. Okay, I just, okay, I just want to make sure. I, I, I think. Uh, I think Paulie saw it one time in one of the episodes. Paulie <laughs> and Chris. Yeah, when they, when they were in the Pine Barrens. The Pine Barrens one. Barons. That's a great episode. Which is one, probably the best episode. That is the <laughs> best episode. <laughs> Don't they have a prequel coming up? They're working on that? A movie. There's a, a movie, movie coming out about um, like Junior's time, like when they were in Newark or something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is the best episode. That I is know. the best episode. All right. Hopefully. Then we need the relish bags. The relish. 
<laughs> the ketchup. Now, now, I need your help. So I know you have like four black belts. or, or Four, right? One, two, three. Yeah, three and a, um, uh, a purple belt on the hands. Right, so I need you to teach me how to karate chop my, my co-host or like the Vulcan death but, grip or some kind of fancy thing so when, he, when he's acting just, up. Just before you start, before I, don't him to undersell, I don't want him to undersell himself because he has some undersell. very nice purple and gray belts and pink belts he wears uh, sometimes on his white coat. It's but brown. But they're you have more belts, oh, but, but we're talking black belts, and I have like yeah, regular yeah. belts. To Continue, hold my I'm pants. sorry. That's okay. So, Continue. so ha- tell us the process the of getting death a... death grip, I can't show you because that's... That's secret. That's spot. Okay, okay. So <laughs> so I, I, I can't show you. The karate, traditional karate chop that everybody says, Not good. that's like Captain Kirk. Like that doesn't even... You know who Captain Kirk of is? Of course, yeah. 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 yeah, from Spock. So, 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 uh, I, I don't Trek, know yeah. if anybody has ever... Oh, no, you know who did that? I think Ralph Macho, the karate kid, did that once, right? That's a real one, right? That's when he's That was real. That's the crane kicker that he's done, the crane. The crane, no can defend so if you do the crane <laughs> no can you should try it on the street you get picked up and slam on your head what so. <laughs> i have a fear like finish him I yeah it's it's pretty scary because a lot of people know like martial arts and you don't know who knows martial arts so correct it's crazy if i'm out i have a nightmare that i'm out like at a bar or a club and you know what I get, time, I get what into time a, is this happening around two in the morning yeah and i so get in nothing into it good guy. happens are you still out at two in the morning I'm, I'm usually in asleep by 10. So usually I can use I can use my you know my blackness to try to fend off some you know I can t- yeah. talk loud as to say right. you know deep voice yeah. but sometimes you know you don't know if you're gonna get like the little scrawny guy who knows you know mixed martial arts and you know it well it's put it's, you down it's quick, it's Dave it, you already know I, I'm yeah, staying yeah, away I'm not touching I'm this I'm guy. I'm yeah. a, but there's right. some people who are or, you know, stealthily. Right, so you can't mess with everybody. So how, how do we know exactly? You, how do you know somebody's a martial <laughs> artist? You don't go in a bar at 2 a.m. Uh, right. I think I think it's stay that's, home. Nothing that's happens good, uh, good in a bar after 12. Happens. Trust me, so I worked in him for 15 What's years. the process of training to get, like, a, the first black belt? The first black belt? Right. Well, it depends upon the discipline. Okay, so, so it's discipline it, it specific. depends upon the discipline. So some people's belt structure is completely different than, you know, like, for instance, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, um, you familiar with Brazilian yes, Jiu-Jitsu? Okay, so yeah. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they basically don't have a testing system. You know, the the instructor will just look at you rolling with a bunch of other guys, and if you start tapping them out, you know, tap out, right. thing, somewhere along the line will hit you in the back with a belt and say, hey, you're ready to go to the next belt. My, one, of, one of my disciplines, there's specific testing all the way through, and then the other discipline mm-hmm. is... You get tested for your yellow belt, and you don't get tested till you're a black belt. Right. So, th- so that, that's unlike, let's say, Taekwondo, right? Korean uh, martial no, arts, which uh, I think have very strict um, testing systems. Or no? Yes, they have a very uh, lucrative testing system. Oh, okay. Tell yes. me about that because my we, very we, lucrative. So you we fell you're, into that trap when right, you're a white belt. So if you have kids out there, mm-hmm. and you see Taekwondo schools with a white belt, and then you got to get ten red stripes before you get you. Correct. That's fifty dollar uh, test. Fifty dollar test. Fifty dollar test. I see belts with more stripes than I've ever seen in my life. Right. That's a yeah. That's a, it's called a money making kind of. So thing. not traditional. Um, like you're saying, that's more of just a yeah, way to just test and make money and make the parents happy and take pictures and give trophies. Oh yeah, a lot of trophies. Participation trophies are wild these days. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about. That's a, I think it's a good segue because I know you. Uh, we talked about kids a little bit, but. Um, how a little bit more about, um, you know, coaching kids and what do you, I think because a lot of our listeners out there, ourselves included, are, are parents. Um, I'm a parent too. And so you're a parent, what is your, how old is your He's children? five. Oh, five. I have one boy, yeah. So I have one, he's 10. Uh, what sports playing? I got him playing baseball right now. He'll, he'll be involved in some martial arts. Or, sure. Because you know, sure. he's in the gym, he's exposed to it right. all day long. Right, 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 right. So my wife's think? a trainer as well at my gym, so he, oh, he brings okay. So it's a family, so. it's a family affair. Yes. So what do you think of people like me? My kids are both in sports, and I'm like so involved, and like Should he be they're playing a game, and I'm yelling at them. And Wait, you're that? Are you, are you, you the guy? Though, please tell the me no. That you're yelling not my the kid, guy in the not, stand. Yeah, that is screaming at a tee ball. It's basketball, but yeah, I screamed at that's tee you? ball too. Yeah, yeah that's you. he is the quintessential overbearing parent. So I just want what's best old, for my child. Right, everybody does. How old is your child? Uh, eight and six. Eight and six. So I could tell you, um, and what sports do they play? Basketball and uh, tennis. No one is there giving out a scholarship to an eight and six year old. Right. No I'm, one. I'm trying to live my life through the child, and I, you know, let the I coach. know if I can put on. He was a very late bloomer, so he missed the right. opportunity so to play sports. Let the coach, let the know, coach handle it. Always let the coach handle it. There's it's hard. Nothing, yeah. If there is nothing detrimental to your children, there's no pushing or shoving or or really degrading stuff. 
my philosophy is talk to the coach. If you have a right. question, talk to the coach. I'll never let you fall at the wayside. Yeah. And then if you want to go home and say, look, how did you feel in that batting stance? Maybe, maybe you know, maybe you were a little too close to the plate. I don't know. That's what I saw. Right. Go ask your coach. Maybe he can make that adjustment. Right. But that's what they need to learn. Because you send them mixed signals. And yeah, they can't run home all the time to mommy and daddy. You have to allow the coach to do his thing. And basically, these guys you have to respect. They're not getting paid right. on, they're on that the level. Time, right? they're, they're, fa they're fathers themselves. Right. They're coming home from work, and they're sacrificing their family time sure. and their time to coach these kids on the field. So the last thing, the last thing that should be done to these people is like for parents to just like keep going out and i see it i see the t-ball mm. right i mean t-ball it's, it's ridiculous. incredible right right, right. It's, it's it's crazy you see the parents fighting which i think yeah. is, so is nuts you're trying <laughs> you're trying to teach a kid to be coachable right I mean, what, what, what does that the mean best that kid the, I, some of my best kids are kids that are completely coachable like mm. you said they you they they come there they listen they apply themselves they go home and they practice what you tell them and they don't quit you know they don't question it they they show up on time they're dedicated. Show they're, respect they're, they're, also, I, I, they're respectful. Respect. I'll take a hundred of those kids over the super, super, super talented kid who has an attitude. Who has an attitude? Yeah, right. No, I hear and that. it's a life lesson, right? You're teaching because in reality, right, life we, skills. Right. We always have to realize that the percentage of kids are going to go on to play sports professionally. Otherwise, one percent or less, right? right? So or less. But these lessons they learn, right, will help them uh, in the business world. Help them in professional For their whole world, life. Their whole life, right? Their Personal whole life. and professional uh, yeah. relationships. I, everything. Right. I get I get really really nice emails, text messages, and DMs from what? Like I just got one the other day from. Uh, one of my wrestlers that I uh, train, he, he's a police officer now, and he said, without right. the training that I got from you and, and everything, this wouldn't have been happened, so I want to thank you. So those are the rewarding things. That's the really rewarding stuff that right, comes right. my way. You know the stuff that I don't, you know, I don't share. But that's, the, you know, that's what it's all about. So if you, you could, you could help these kids, you know, get into the schools and and if you could help them get scholarships too. By the way, in the sports, it's like of course, yeah, yeah of course, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And you have, I've been able to do yes, that. Yes, a lot, a lot. Yeah, I think we don't give trainers and coaches like yourself, uh, you know, a credit because you're helping people at such different levels of their life, from children to even, you know, middle-aged people like this guy. Or middle who's saying middle-aged? You said middle-aged. Did I? Yeah, you said oh, I'm middle-aged. Oh, my goodness. Which is true. That, that was, well, to that older that people, you know, you know, deal with issues with their <laughs> health, feel apart. better, you know, because we think of it more of a physical thing, but it's also, a, you know, a mental thing. So spiritual you, thing. Yeah, spiritual thing. I call it a mental and physical development. How old are you, by the way? 60, 40, 45, 45. 45. You yeah. called the middle. I'm 52. Are you, oh, all right. See, age is just a number. Age is just a number, my friend. How did you get? How did you get involved with training uh, athletes? And then, you know, how's that? Uh, is that something just by word of mouth? Is that something just by uh, the results you've had with other athletes? Or how does that come into play? So, so jumping away from kids back. Again, that's so. not a problem. So it's a fun. It's a kind of a funny story. So um, Chris Canty. Okay, yeah, sure. NFL. NFL football. All right, yeah. so football and the Giants won the Super Bowl, right? He's a good friend of mine, by the way. Okay, right. He, uh, before I knew him, he was training with this, with B.J. Raji, also the center for um, Green Bay Packers, and Justin Tuck at the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were in a back training with some guy, and I was just observing it. And I was my personal opinion, to be politically correct, that what was being given to them was incorrect. Or? Was incorrect. Okay. Yeah. So I approached Chris on the side and said, "Listen, why don't you just show up tomorrow? Give me a half hour." Yeah. And he, since then, that was it. Wow. So I started training him, and then it just snowballed from there. He was like, "Hey, you got to go to my guy. Hey, you got to go to my guy." So you know that's, and then I just got the exposure. And so once you know the word gets out, and you start training people, and they get results, and they start sure. performing better on the field. And then that's how you get the athletes. And plus, so, so many of the Giants and I mean, Yankees live in this area, right? So yeah, they're mostly Alpine. Alpine or Eastern Bergen County yeah, or anywhere in Northern Bergen Closter County. Closter and sure. all, it's like right by, it's two minutes from my facility. So they live, they all live up there, a lot of them. So it's easier for them. Where can people find find you? Are you on um, social, social media? media? Where, where else? Website? On, on the, on the, so online. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm on, obviously, Facebook. The uh, website for the gym so the, my my Instagram, I'm just Dave Paladino on my Instagram. Right. Uh, same thing on my Facebook page. Um, and then there is a obviously website for Impact Zone. It's impactzonenj.com. So you can find me there. Um, or come by and visit me in Norwood, New Jersey. So you can come check me out there. We'll I'm, definitely check it out. I'm over in Ridgewood. We'll have like a pull up. Uh, you're close. Yeah, I want to come by. 
You're we, close too. I'm in uh, Allendale. So we could have, come by and have a pull-up pull pull contest. Pull-up push-up contest. Push-up contest. Push up or, you wear your Lululemon. Any thoughts? Do you like one versus the other? You mean push-ups, pull-ups? No, they're both great. They're both, they're both body great. weight, yeah. If you could do anything, you should do, we'll do push-ups. Squats. We'll do squats. Ooh. Oh. Weighted squats or body Actually, weight? I think before – so if I had to ask you, we, you know, you, you have limited time because as – we're not just comedians here. We actually are physicians and are. busy practicing like everyone else, busy, uh, professionals and busy. But we want to make time for exercise. I do run. I play tennis. Uh, he plays golf. But if you have, like, say, 25 minutes to do a resistance workout, what would you pick as your top, uh, you know, uh, moves or workouts? Body exercise? squats, push-ups, pull-ups. That's it. So, so pulling and pushing. Uh, gone are the days where you do biceps exercise. on Mondays, tries on No, that's Tuesdays. not gone. I mean, um, um, but when you're on you limited time. Minutes, no, I'm right? just no, saying. Though, is, oh, is there 30 a benefit? minutes, fine. But, uh, 30 minutes you could get a workout in. So but is there a benefit for that? Because I used to do back one day, yes, chest one day. It's resistance, so you build a muscle. No, but I'm saying as far as total body As opposed body to doing, workouts. let's say, a compound exercise versus like a just, you know, a bicep concentration curl. Again, it's... Lines. The situation dictate so the goal. So if you want bigger arms and aesthetically you want you're going to do a bicep workout. Right. If you want bigger triceps, back or whatever. If you want overall fitness. Right. I mean, you got to throw buys in. You got to throw tries in. You got to throw your back in. What about dips? I always thought the dips, dips are great are some of the as best well. Upper body. Yeah, uh, dips, dips are great as well. So when's the last time you did dip? I do. I actually do dips quite really? a bit. Yeah. Okay. Running's really. I dip. Good. You, I dip. You dip. I dip. You dip. Yeah. Dips really. Dip. If you if you got to find the time though to work out, there's no excuse not to work out. So no, but you know, getting up in the morning, even just doing push-ups, um, pull-up bar, whatever, just in the morning, it's it's. it's the, I, I think that and I even tell patients that everyone can find time. You know, you don't have to be Everybody. as big as you, as in, incredible in shape as you are, but everyone can find that that medium level of fitness that will benefit them greatly, health and otherwise. Right. Um, and it doesn't take as much time as people think. Because, you know, if you tell people they need to spend an hour in the gym five times a week, it's going to be unapproachable for the majority of people. Really? That's going to be an unapproachable? Think about it. <laughs> think about it. So, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll crush that in a minute. Yes. But right. 30 minutes. Think about 30 minutes. Everybody has 30 minutes. There's no excuse for people not to go to the gym for 30 minutes or sure. to work out for 30 minutes. Sure. It doesn't have to be the gym. It could be bike riding. It could be tennis. It could be walking. There is no excuse. 30 minutes. Think about 30 minutes. How much time we waste in a day just yeah. watching TV. You, 30 minutes is nothing for nothing. TV. Yeah. 30 minutes walking for 30 minutes the benefits of walking is great so there's no excuse as for an hour I believe you have an, definitely have an hour to work out as well yeah. no matter how busy you are sure if you don't have your health you don't have anything no one's sitting here no one's having this no one, you don't have your health it's if you over. don't have your health that's, I think that's the perfect way to end this yeah. uh, fantastic show we please check out great Impact words. Zone right put your 30 minutes please. hour there Yeah. Dave thank you so much for thank coming you guys. and talking to us had a great today. time man Recommend Daily Dose. I'm your co-host, Dr. Surid Sugger. Dr. Clinton Coleman. Until next time, be well. See you next time. Check out recent episodes and learn more about these two modern medicine men and their podcast at holynameorg slash recommended daily dose.